everyone! Today's video is another collaboration with Spine Magazine, who are a book design magazine, and they have a wonderful, wonderful website, which I will link down below. This one today is all about naked hardbacks. So what is underneath the dust jacket of a hardback book? I've talked in the past about the element of surprise in book design, and I think that this is one of the best things that any designer can do. So that's hiding unexpected things within the physical object of the book. One of the ways that I've discussed in the past is using end papers and making the most of that space and really designing something special there. But another way, and I think it's because this is even less expected, is putting something on the hardback of the book. So it's not there for the person who picks up the book immediately. It's something that you often discover after you've purchased the book and that's a really neat little little surprise. I suspect that sometimes people take a book home and don't even notice until maybe years later that there's some hidden design underneath the dust jacket. So let me show you what I mean. Here's a recent example that I imagine most of you are fairly familiar with, at least in the UK. This is the UK edition of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them screenplay. This was designed by the incredible design duo Mina Lima, who did all the graphic design for the Harry Potter films. And it's got this kind of art deco vibe to a very, very simple colour scheme, just that navy blue with gold, um, some of it's printed and some of it is actually foiled. Underneath, there are the end papers, but then I'm going to take the dust jacket off completely. There's a niffler, a tiny little niffler. Um, if you had already noticed this, leave me a comment down below, uh, or if you haven't seen it before, I'd love to know the ratio of people who have looked underneath and those who haven't, because I just thought that that was such a delightful surprise. And then the spine is the same as on the dust jacket. Here's another recent example. This is If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio, and this is the American edition. It's not actually out in the UK yet, but it does have a different cover. I read a proof copy of this and just had to buy the, the, the finished copy because I really, really enjoyed it. And I'm so glad that I did because this has got some fantastic design elements. It's a university novel, has a lot in common with The Secret History by Donald Tartt. If you want to hear me talk more about the book itself, I'll link my wrap up for April down below. Um, it has the deckled edges, which I think fits quite nicely with the aesthetic. It's got these end papers here. And then underneath, it's rather subtle, but this here is a debossed design. Many of the books at my university, and I know other universities are the same, will have a mark something like this on them. And it's something that's put on by the university to mark it as being theirs. So at my university, most of the books look like this, albeit a bit more battered. This logo is actually the logo of the publishing company Flatiron Books. It's such a clever way of presenting a university novel and the colour as well is quite like something that you would get out of a, a library, an older looking book. I'm super excited to see what they do with the UK one. I really like the cover, it's got that dead sparrow on it. Again, I talk about that a little bit in my April wrap up. And then there's an example that I always come back to in so many different book design videos, but it's because this is perhaps the book that has the most different techniques in it. As you might have guessed, it's the UK edition of The Grace Keepers got the lovely end papers, which I've talked about in the past. Under the dust jacket, we have this beautiful night sky design. It goes right the way around. Then we've got mer people swimming underneath the water. And what I love so much about the design of the dust jacket, the end papers, and the naked hardback is how much it all relates back to the story, the different layers of it, and how, how the fact that there are layers, as in you've got the front cover and then the back and then underneath it, it all sort of fits together and I won't go into that in in more detail because spoiler territory but if you haven't read it you'll just have to take my word for it this is very very clever the other thing to note is that this is not a cheap way of producing books the designer would have had to come up with essentially two completely different designs and not to mention all the printing costs but 
I think when you see that a publisher has put that much effort into a book, you know that they really believe in it and that it's probably going to be a really good read. And at the end of the day, publishing is a business, so their aim is to make money and so they don't put the money into books unless they really believe in them. I am a person who will pick up a book and especially if it's a hardback, I will start searching for those hidden design features and I want to encourage you to do the same and this is the great thing about shopping at actual bookshops. So if you have a local bookshop I would highly recommend that you go on a bit of a treasure hunt and see what you can find or even just do the same with your own bookshelves. Have a look under some of those dust jackets and see if there's anything that you haven't noticed before. It's amazing the things that you can spy when you pay a little bit more attention. So that's all from me today. I hope that this encourages you to start looking a little more carefully at, at the books that you buy, the books that you're browsing. Do go and check out Spine Magazine because they have lots of articles on all different aspects of book design, their interviews, all sorts of things. And yeah, it's one of my favorite places to get inspiration. Feel free to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.